Hustle, dog. Microphone check, one, two, what is this? The five for the sassy What's of up? the roughneck business. I float like gravity, never had a cavity, got more friends and solo has family. Um, all right. Tales of Macaque Podcast, episode three. How and you my doing, good man? friend, Ansel Javeri. Good to see you, buddy. Yeah, bro. So I really wanted you to come down today because you're in town uh, mm-hmm. for the first time in a while. You're living in Dallas. You're doing mm-hmm. some doctor shit. But you're in town because I talked you into doing a jiu-jitsu tournament. Yeah, you roped me in. You, <laughs> fucking, you got you me, in. dude. <laughs> roped you in. <coughs> so how long have you been training for? Let's see. I've been training since the beginning of November. So that's November. two two and a half months. I was out of town for solid two weeks in December. I think uh, I've maybe attended uh, maybe 15 classes nice, nice, in my nice. life. Total. Okay, so you start in November. Now it's middle of January. <laughs> yeah. So you're a white belt, as white as a white belt can be. Yeah, never tapped anyone. Never tapped anyone. <coughs> Ever. Ever. And this is awesome, man. I'm so excited. Yeah, you've never dude. done anything like this. You didn't wrestle before. No, I've never really been in martial arts or like a high pressure sport because you did no, golf. Before. I did golf, which is actually it's high pressure, but okay. a very different pressure. Right. So you much. did tournaments and stuff. Yeah, I played a lot of a lot of competitive golf. Okay. As a kid. So how are you feeling about this tournament right now? Um. Well, I'm super excited. Okay. But um, I don't see it. I don't see my. I'm, I have very low expectations. Okay. I think very low expectations. I think that's good, man. I think that's good. Because it, it's funny, like, every time we talk about it, we feel the exact same way. Yeah. We don't have much confidence, very excited, right, right. it's going to be hectic. Right. And the thing is, I've been training for jiu-jitsu, like, three years now. I started my first wrestling tournament, was like, ten years ago. Right. I've been through you've this a been, lot. Yeah, you've, you've done this a lot. But I don't think I've improved at it, like, in terms of, like, dealing with the anxiety, dealing with the fear. Mm-hmm. Um, it's cool that we have all these friends in town tonight. Because maybe cool. it'll help with anxiety and stuff. Yeah. And maybe we'll sleep a little better tonight. Maybe yeah, hopefully. I, I haven't really been thinking about it today. Cool, cool. I feel like I thought about it more like a week ago Perfect. than I am today. Perfect. I'm not... I, I think whatever will be will be. There's not much I can do. Yeah, and we were laughing about it today because you don't even know like the rules. Yeah, I don't even know the <laughs> rules. Yeah, because... Yeah, like I was saying earlier, like I, I was rolling maybe three days ago and some guy was showing me a move and... I had to grab his pant leg, and, and I grabbed, like, underneath, you uh-huh. know, like that. And he's like, oh, no, you can't do that. That's illegal. I was like, I, I had no idea yeah, you couldn't yeah. do that. So, you know, I'm still learning, like, what's legal. And do you know the points? Do you have an idea? No, I don't know the point system. Yeah, so the good thing about it is it's pretty logical. You know, like, obviously, passing guard is a big deal. Right. That's points. Right. A takedown is Makes points. Makes sense. Okay. Mount is, is points. points. Yeah. Getting someone's back is points yeah and honestly man you shouldn't even worry about the points because that takes a lot of mental effort right when you're in the match looking up at the scoreboard most scoreboards Wait, are so very the, illogical there are they actively scoring it on yeah. a scoreboard right so oh. there's got to be a person at the scoreboard who's keeping time and there's a ref in the on the mat with you okay and every time something happens he's got a you know a wristband on each side Meaning uh, one opponent or the oh, other. Like one, point, one competitor. Point, 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 right. right. So you're either on the right or his left hand. He throws up points. I'm going to ignore that as best I can. Yeah, exactly. There's no reason to, to pay attention to it. There's no benefit that they could give me by knowing. Yeah, you're not going to be in side control like, well, I'm down by two. Yeah, so I, I need to do that. To do yeah. is... <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to stay alive and just like make, go the distance. If I can survive and not get tapped, I think that's a win. Cool. You know? I Even if I lose on points or whatever... I mean, I think it's, I, I only know, like, three submissions, maybe, and I've never executed them. Which one do you feel like you know the best? Um, maybe Kimuro. Kimuro or Americana. I, there's a million names for it, the chicken wing thing. So, so here's a, one, one tip I can give you. Uh, Kimura. Okay, <laughs> Kimura. I can't even say it right. Yeah, it's not a Mexican word. It's Japanese. Keep in, keep in mind uh, the people I'm learning from all have hillbilly ass accents. <laughs> all right, well, get your geese on, boys. Let me show you the Kimura. <laughs> you know they don't really. I don't know. That might be it. It's a factor. It's a factor. All right. Um, so I think this is really cool, man. I, I'm really happy you signed up for this. And so what I wanted to do 
is sit down today and talk about how you feel beforehand, uh, go over some things, and then I want to film you tomorrow with yeah. my commentary. Because I'm very excited, because I've done lots of jiu-jitsu tournaments, my first one at Blue Belt, and also the first one that I'm going to get stoned beforehand. <laughs> I'm eating um, a little uh, taffy. You're crazy, dude. Created by X to the Z, Mr. Exhibit himself. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to eat it uh, probably right after weigh-in. And then I'm very excited. I've never done that before, but I train high a lot. And it always goes well in training. Because, like, uh, jiu-jitsu, you know, it's very competitive even in the gym. Right. And so it's not often that someone compliments me. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, But when they do, it's usually after I've been eating this. uh, Really? Yeah. That's really interesting. Yeah. You and think so, you you just can you describe that like why what like the difference between doing it stone and like what So I have some theories because science tells us that weed slows down reaction time, right? Right. And jujitsu is designed to capitalize on common mistakes right. in fighting, on common reactions. Right. So for example, if a guy gets on top of you in a mount, it's very common to extend your arms, try to push him up. Yeah. In the same way you do a bench press. So you teach beginners to take their arm. That's an arm bar. If someone takes you down like a wrestler, they extend their neck. So you teach beginners. That's a guillotine. You just take their neck. Like grab and their choke neck. Them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, from yeah. guard. Yeah. And so I, I think that maybe because weed slows you down just that much, you don't. You don't get react. Lost in thought. You don't. Okay. Yeah. So that's why I think it is because my reactions, my physical reactions, are very sharp. When I'm stoned, maybe that's just because I've been uh, practicing a lot. My favorite part of practice is the technique. I'm one of the few guys in the gym that will do the technique until told not to, and just drill, just drill and drill and drill. Or other that's guys, rare. They do it a that's times, rare. They look They're like, oh, let's roll and talk. Yeah, you know, start goofing off. Because um, I'm a guy, I, I like to goof around. I like to chat. You do, but once I'm on the mat, like, I, it's not really a time and a place to be business time. Time to learn. Yeah. Yeah, that's the other thing, man. I don't think I've man. I don't think I've drilled enough technique. I feel like because the class is usually divided half and half into like drilling technique and then just free rolling, and sometimes it'll just be just rolling and no yeah. technique. So definitely weighted on the, on more just rolling. And as a white belt, like dude, I get no time to drill. Like they'll right. just be teaching moves that are way too advanced for me because it's just like mixed purple, black, brown, mm-hmm. blue belts, white belts, and it's just, like. I feel like, yeah, I haven't drilled the basic techniques. Yeah. You know? And that, that's inevitable, and that's just how it's going to keep going. Right. But um, th- there's a really good quote that brings back what I was saying about uh, not getting lost in thought. Right. This is from Salo Hibero, who teaches at the gym um, that Taylor trains at, the University of Jiu-Jitsu. It's on Sports Arena, very close to here. Salo Hibero, he's a legend in the sport, and he has this really good quote where he says, if you think, then you're late. If you're late, you use muscle. If you use muscle, you get tired. If you're tired, you die. And <laughs> it's just such like a badass quote that really hones in the fact you just gotta you just gotta keep moving, man. Which is why I have a real hard time when someone's trying to coach me while I'm rolling. If they're telling me something to do, because it fucks up my head. Because I think it's a different uh, brain frequency or a different part of the brain or something to where you're thinking about what they're saying and to where you're just flowing just and flowing rolling. yeah you think you, so if you, someone's yelling at me especially a move I haven't practiced like can you imagine like if a guy pulls guard on you and I'm yelling at you just car will pass car will pass I, yeah, absolutely like, what the nothing. fuck is I, that I, man yeah and it's yeah, not that yeah, I'm wrong yeah, yeah. it's that when it hits your head you and then you're thinking, thinking and then and not to mention the other guy hears it too Exactly. <laughs> and he's, exactly. he can defend against it. And I've had that problem also to where I think I'm being sneaky. Like, I have a triangle, and I'm not in a position to lose it, but I don't want to get it yet. Maybe I want to move his hand a little more or get my foot in a get better position. Get a tighter position. position. And my coach or someone like, who's it. trying to coach it is, you have a triangle! And you're like, I know. Bro. <laughs> I, I see. That's I interesting. I got it. I got it. That's interesting. Yeah. So I have that problem. Um, and I don't know, like, if anyone from my gym is coming to the tournament. Obviously, no one from your gym is. No. We're in San Diego right God, now. God, no. Your yeah. gym is in Texas. Texas, yeah, no. Um, but I think it's going to be a fun day, man. I think it's going to be exciting. Yeah, um, I think it'll be a learning experience. I mean, I I could get tapped out in five seconds. I could easily have in. So but... let's, let's look at, a, like, a, a strategy for you. Right. So what, what position are you the most comfortable in? On top or on bottom? 
D guard. Because honestly, like, obviously I know Mount is a better, more dominant position, more favorable position. But I, I don't, I mean, <clears throat> to submit from there, I, I, whenever I get to Mount, I don't really know what to do. I usually either go for the X choke, you know, or try uh, Americana. Okay, which so... Which is very easily defended. So Mount is pretty far down the line. Right. So when you start think about the start of a match, mm-hmm. it's do you want to be on top guard or on bottom guard? Oh, definitely bottom guard. Definitely bottom. Yeah, okay. I'm more comfortable with bottom guard. So you're absolutely not going for a takedown. You're going to try to pull. Right. A takedown meaning you make the other guy go down. No, I also don't know how to do that. Okay, I've never perfect. done that. So. Okay, so it's very simple for you, which is kind of a good thing because sometimes I get lost in the options. Where I'm like, I used you to wrestle. Too many, I know, like, some you know, good take shit. double leg or whatever. Yeah, and I know some cool ones. I always wanted to do judo, where like you toss the guy, like, way yeah, like, hip I toss. don't know how to do that, but it's always in my mind. Yeah. But realistically, I should be pulling guard as well. And so we can go to the gym today and go over it. So okay, so you want to pull guard, and then what do you want to do from there? Once you're pull in guard, guard and guard then open guard, close guard, close guard, and then. Uh, I, I would probably go for a Kimuro if it's open. Mm-hmm. And then if he, like, tucks his arm, then Kimuro sweep. Cool. And do you have a K- favorite Kimura? side? Kimura. Kimura. I, <laughs> I, <break that. laughs> I only have one side, man. I only practice everything okay. to the left. Okay. So what I really want to do is film your matches and then edit them into this podcast in three segments. So right now this is part one pre and then I want to film both of our matches, and hopefully, like they're not too long. If we both go like several matches, it could get really boring. Yeah, that's what I want to get. So, hopefully, the next part of the segment is Ansel pulling guard and a Kimura or a Kimura sweep. I would say go for the Kimura sweep. Man, More to get likely, points. yeah. Th- yeah, rather than go for the submission. Cause yeah, that's gonna cause it's a tough go submission. You get like I'll um, lose position. And also, Kimuras tend to be. Uh, Strength based, right? Which you don't seem like you're, I'm you're not, a cardio I'm not. machine. Or That's the thing, dude. I have, I, I think I've. So I, I'm not, a, I'm not at all a cardio machine. Mm-hmm. I mean, my cardio is definitely subpar. My strength is subpar. I think for my weight class, I'm not at all stronger than anyone. Mm-hmm. My technique, I mean, I haven't drilled. I like, I like I was saying earlier. I think it's very unlikely that anyone else is going to have less experience than me. But what you do have is iron balls. That is, that's what it comes that's down it. to at the end of the day, dude. At the end of the day, that's what's going to save me. So that's yeah. what he has. So I feel shitty, like, not knowing exactly what comes next in this video. So for people watching, it seems very unprofessional. And that's for a reason, because it is unprofessional. So coming up next, Ansel Javeri. <laughs> yep. His first match. Here we go. We'll see how it goes. Cut. All right, so for Ansel's first match, I got to uh, recruit my buddy Dre to do commentary with me. What's up, Dre? You ever seen a match like this? Nah, man. All right, so we got Ansel in the white gi and his opponent. Oh, that was a I called him the Hulk. Yeah, so that was Ansel's plan, right, is to pull pull guard. So okay. what he's trying to do is get the other guy down to the ground. He wants to get the other guy down to his knees. Hmm, and that counts as a point? No, no, it doesn't count as a point, but what it does is it sets up Ansel's other attacks. Okay. So from there, um, he's a lot safer, and the other guy's in a lot more danger. Hmm, okay. So where is this located? Uh, it's at the University of San Diego. Mm-hmm. So it's okay. like a, yeah, it's a, it's a tap out cancer fundraiser tournament. Hmm. Interesting. You, you see that guy on the left side of the screen, Dre? You see the, the, the you see his belly in the camera? <laughs> it's Ansel's dad, right? Oh wow! Uh. <laughs> the dude just he he's never been to a tournament like this. Like he has no status in the community, mm-hmm. and he just like swooped a chair. Like the only other people in chairs <laughs> are like coaches. Coaches. Like, there's a UFC fighter there named Dean Lister. I don't know if you saw Dean Lister. Oh, uh, I heard of him. Yeah, so he's right on the other side of the match there. Uh, so he just didn't want to sit on the ground and got a chair. He's, nah, he's just a boss. Yeah. So you see the Ansel's opponent here. He's got him in a half guard. Mm. Explodes him to side control so that's mm. three points mm-hmm. you know, three points. guards three points so now Ansel's down and Ansel he really didn't practice like getting out of these positions you know yeah so we were talking about earlier man like really his only hope is to stay in guard and go for the arm he had a very particular arm sweep he's going for mm-hmm. it's not working too well it looks like <laughs> no <laughs> it's not working too well See, so Ansel shows the guy's back. His opponent's really good, man. This guy's really good. Yeah, it looks like it's it. super strong. We can see before, man, he's got neck muscles. You know, like, he's hey, jacked. Got a tree stump for a neck. Yeah. Yeah, so I sped up this part because it gets a little tiresome. 
of just the guy uh, laying on Ansel's back. But you can see, what, what do you think, man? How's this Bowden for Ansel? Uh, it doesn't look too too good, man. It looks uh, like he's not in, you know, position to, you so know, win got, the fight. Uh, he just got down four more points. Yeah. yeah, so they call this the most dominant position. This is back mount. Oh. And so you can see, he just keeps, like, wiggling Ansel around. Yeah. He definitely uh, looks like he's controlling. Like, if this guy was on anybody's back, it would be a hard time. Little and Ansel, who didn't practice this exact position, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, he was out drinking instead of practicing. <laughs> he was. He was <laughs> drinking the night before. <laughs> <laughs> on an unrelated note, though. Not yeah, okay. Note. <laughs> you see, but Ansel's really tough, man. Like, he held him in a vet long, so he just tapped yeah. to the rear naked choke. Congratulations to Ansel's yeah. opponent, the Black Hulk. That dude's really tough. Yeah. But oh, here's yeah. the cool thing, man. He says what's up to his dad. And look at this, man. Immediately afterwards, they're friends. That's awesome. Right then. They're sportsmanship both saying, like, there. Oh, yeah. Serious, man. Yeah. Serious sportsmanship. All right. So that's it for me and Dre. That was Ansel's first match. Second match, we got commentary from Andrew. Sanchez Ansel Javeris, first, or sorry, second match ever. His first one since he lost. His last one he fought the Hulk. It went down never better than expected. It's never gonna happen again. He's never, never gonna fight the Hulk again. Ansel Javeris deludes himself into thinking it'll never happen again. Would like all Carlson Gracie team last members match, did a very good job to assemble oh by the open doors this time. at the end of the gym. Like, I need to speak loudly so they can hear it, so his opponent can hear it. He's gonna pull Tom, guard and go for a Kimura sweep. Like That's his whole strategy. <laughs> he doesn't do that, he's fucked. He doesn't know anything else. He doesn't know anything else. So if he doesn't get the closed guard and the Kimura sweep, he does not stand a chance. I hope his opponent cannot hear this. Because I am dead serious. <laughs> <laughs> I thought like you'd be fighting already, okay? Can't keep like talking for <laughs> a while. What are you doing? <laughs> Alright, Ansel's second match. Here he is. He's going against Mr. Blue Guy. What Ansel wants to do is his right hand grab the collar. That's about it. And left hand lift. Oh, the guy pulled guard before Ansel could. Ooh. Good at Close guard, close guard. Shrimp, Ansel, shrimp. Good, good, good. Mr. Blue Guy does often go hands by hands Senor hands. Blue Guy. His right leg is in the half guard. He needs to get it out of there. Or what he can do is when they get off the mat, go to the table, and he goes back. He's gonna pretend like he's already in full guard. That's true. There's probably a lot of system. food under this oh, table. Okay. So. so this goes very badly for Ansel. Um, gonna stop and go back to the center. He is down by quite a lot of points. I believe that is seven points already. Ansel is not one of the strongest positions. Last match, he was here and he gave up his back. Not something he wants to do. Chill, Ansel. Long time. Chill. Breathe, man. Breathe. Elbows in. Good. Elbows on his hips. Hands on his hips. Good. And he gets down. He gets his hands on his hips. Create space. Create space. He's doing a very good job so far. We had a long time in the match. I can't see the clock. So my guess is... Um, is it off? A billion minutes. One billion minutes. Is it just off? No, it's on. Oh. Of course. It's on. Apparently the GoPro is still... Oh, the oh, light's on. My bad. This is <laughs> Back to the match. <laughs> GoPros sometimes look off. Oops. Ansel Javier did a very good job showing here. What does it do? Hands on the hips, Ansel. Low, low, low. Good, good, good. Soup your leg inside and shrimp, shrimp, shrimp. Uh, I sent him to his death. He has hands down from his neck and he's going for the choke. That's the problem with jiu-jitsu. Good advice goes wrong. Hey, good, good. Man, this guy's got a really good base. I wouldn't be surprised if he's very, a wrestler. Looks very wide. Yeah, he's a very wide base. He's doing a very good job keeping his hands out and his hand underneath Ansel's arm. Around, yeah, around his head. What so would you say about there. his facial hair? His facial hair is very impressive. I'm very jealous of it myself. I think I would already be a black belt with that hair. Um, nothing against him. It's but... everything against him. <laughs> It's just embarrassing. I hope he never understand. hears this when I tell him that he has black belt hair and blue belt mount. Which does not bode well for Ansel because Ansel is white belt in every aspect. See, so he's got a very near choke. Nice. 
We got him with a very good show. See, really, it's not that my advice is bad. It's that it was the wrong advice for the situation. All right, let's just cut to a replay here of Senor Blue Guy patting him on the tummy. See, he's got a very near choke. Nice. We got him with a very good choke. See. Recording. All right, bro. We're back here. We had the competition yesterday. It went pretty fucking good, man. It was a pretty good tournament. Dude, how, how do you feel about it? I feel great, man. That was like 10 times better of an experience than I expected. Right. So how did you anticipate it going? What, what were you thinking beforehand? Well, do you remember? Yeah. As you know, I wasn't too optimistic. I think I was <laughs> maybe yeah. I was trying to have realistic expectations because, like I said before, like... It's very unlikely that anyone had less experience than me there. Right. You know, so I've like I've never like tapped anyone out in the gym. Why would I expect to tap someone out in competition? You know. And so your whole strategy going was to pull guard and get the pull guard, sweep. get the camera sweep. Your first match, you went out there, you got the close guard. It was very good. You're very tough too when he stood up and you kept your legs locked around him. Yeah. That's a tough position, man. I don't like staying there at all. Yeah, he didn't come to the ground like I thought I would, but like yeah, I thought he would. Yeah. But before we get to <laughs> that, dude. I just wanna like I was shitting my pants before. Yeah. I was I was I was I was scared. <laughs> we were watching other fights. Marshall fought first yeah. and raped. Like I just destroyed. Like no, <laughs> no one scored points on him. Like he's just like taking backs, like smiling for the camera Posing. and like just yeah, just posing, just get just like shit. it was uh, it was uh, unbelievable to watch. And then that guy on map five breaks his fucking ankle. Yeah. And, yeah. like, the paramedics are there. They drop an IV in him. They're, like, like f carting him off. And I'm and they're calling my name. And I'm, like, yeah, this is what's going to happen <laughs> to me. I'm going to get broken. I love how we can just take it and be, like, this guy had a terrible day. But it really inconvenienced us, man. Like, <laughs> right. I was supposed to go right <laughs> after him. They like, delayed you, like, right an after hour. This, right after this match. I'm, like, all right, I'm ready. Third match. I'm in this. I just got tapped. I gotta come back strong. But this asshole. This guy. <laughs> it's hurt. <laughs> My mom came up and tried to do some voodoo. She's like, yeah, hey, just it, don't, don't let that happen. <laughs> what? <laughs> mom. <laughs> Whatever he did, don't do that. Yeah, my my parents are so sweet at tournaments. They try so hard, but like but they, they don't understand the mentality. the mentality. Yeah, right. that it's like when we're there, man. When we're fighting. That's all there is in the world. Right, is the mindset. Like we don't. The, nothing else matters. Right. There's not, like, you go in there and try to talk politics at a right, tournament. Right. That's like, like oh my. Yeah. God, your dad man. tried to make small talk with me before, and I was like, I can't. I can't talk. I can't think about anything. Like. I'm about to shit my geek right now. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm fucking scared. laughs> yeah, my dad came up, he's trying to tell me about, um, let me just make sure this is recording. I don't see any bad. Um, but yeah, he's just trying to talk to me about, like, a different tournament. Um, oh, okay. So we had, like, finagle this, uh, video back. We just took a picture. It did we? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's okay. Take yeah. two. Um, so we can just keep continuing and we'll, like, put the audio over a still image. It'll work itself out. Yeah. I gotta work myself with this technology anyway. Oh, so you're gonna keep that first audio? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Let's so, okay. Another funny part was like, um, so we weighed in both of us very much underweight. To, yes. your, to your surprise. To my surprise, like <laughs> I, I weighed myself the day before I came here in the hospital. So I mean, you think it might be a semi accurate scale? <laughs> it weighed. I weighed at one sixty eight, but I mean, with shoes on, uh -huh. with my scrubs on. So that's like a two it's pounds. Not super heavy. Yeah, you know, it's not like. And I was 168, and the line for my lightweight division was 167.5, so I was like, oh, damn. Like, I'm That's like, close. It's close. Like, kind of close. And I didn't do anything in regards to weight. Right. Like, what, I had two fucking fat-ass fish tacos the morning <laughs> yeah. of the fight, and we drank beer the night before. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, like, not doing anything to help that. <laughs> Wasn't very so I was a little out. nervous about making weight. And then I weighed in at 160. Yeah. I was like, wait. And then right before you got called for your match, I was like, gave you a little speech. I was like, man, like these guys are heavier than me, and I don't even notice. Right. Like strength isn't even important in jiu-jitsu. Is that a lie? Your, your first opponent oh was the Black god. Hulk, dude. I, so, <laughs> oh my god, like that. So, yeah, just leading up to the fight, I wasn't as nervous as I expected until it really got close, and like that guy get, gets hurt, 
and I like start seeing other people with white belts that potentially could be my opponents. Mm -hmm. And I saw that Asian dude, and I was like, <laughs> I don't. For some reason, he just looked really good. Yeah, what was it about him? Dude, Can you describe he, for our people at home. And I don't know. He just guy. had like this black gi on. He had like, <laughs> which means nothing. I know. Oh. It means absolutely nothing. He, but he just looked like he'd been experienced. Just the way he's warming up. Just, he just looked. I was like, he looked a lot, quite bigger than me, but he could have mm. been in my weight class. Yeah, and I was that like, happens. and yeah, and I was like, he, he, and he's eight. I don't know. Uh, maybe just I'm racist. Asians. Yeah, but yeah, it's so unnecessary. Like my first opponent was Asian. But it, it wasn't because he, was, <laughs> it wasn't because he was Asian. He just looked good. Yeah, and he had a couple stripes on his belt, and I was like, he just looked like. It means nothing. Does man. it? I don't even know. No, I, I've never fought with stripes on my belt. Okay, so some people just don't put them on there. Yeah, it depends on coaching style. You don't have to. Earn and so that's why belts don't mean so much either. They're not objective. Right? Is there a subjective? Idea? Yeah, right. it's just what does the coach think? Some coaches give them out pretty easily. Some coaches don't. Right. You know, like yeah. I was a white belt for three years. That's abnormal. Right. I was smoking people in tournaments for a couple months. Really. Most coaches would say it's unfair. My coach said he wanted to give me a give belt you on a podium. On the podium. And it just didn't work out. The timing didn't work out. Yeah. Okay. So a lot of coaches have these weird things. things that, like, but, he's just waiting for me to get on a podium. Before you get your blue belt. So then you're just yeah. like a very high level white belt. <laughs> yeah. Just... With no stripes though. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, okay. I didn't realize <laughs> stripes mean nothing. I didn't know that. Yeah. It's all part of the same. It's all part of the same thing. Um, but, but, but then like they call the people in my division. They're like, you're fighting, Ch fighting Charles. And I look at him and I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> this like lean, probably 3% body fat <laughs> yeah. black guy who's like just like has an eight pack and I like have a fucking beer belly. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my, I'm, he's gonna break me, dude. Like, yeah. and I, dude, I, at that point I was like, why did I do this? I was like, why did I think this is a good idea? Like, that guy just broke his ankle. I'm, ne I'm never gonna win. Like, I'm gonna, I, I was just like panicking mode. Dude, Before. the story that I always think about is there's a UFC fighter, Pat Barry. He's not in the UFC anymore. He lost a lot of fights. But he's always the most exciting. And they ask him just a really simple question, like, what goes through your head before a fight? He's like, fear. Straight fear. Right. Every fight. Right. I call my mom, like, mom, why do you let me do this? Right. Like, who, let, who let me do this? <laughs> he's like, my buddy comes up to fuck with me. He goes, the exit door is right there. Really? No, man, you have to fight. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you had said that, like, you don't have to fight, I might have been like, nah, I, I still would have fought. Because I, I wouldn't have been able to sleep at night if I, like, bailed, you know? But in the moment, man, it seems like you're In good the option, moment, no. I was like, I was like, <laughs> why did I do this? I was like, you haven't been fighting for long enough. This isn't something to compete in because there are potentially serious consequences, like getting hurt. Like, I was like, so it's like, just, I know I'm underprepared, you know? Mm -hmm. I know I'm not experienced enough to, like, confidently win yeah so it's like what do you I was, I was like totally second guessing myself. I'm like you're a fucking idiot and idiot. so did anything bad happen nothing bad happened nothing it was the greatest I mean I I lost but like that nothing bad happened I was so happy it I stepped in, in there oh it hurt yeah I yeah. mean I yeah I was I was in some pain I was staring at I mean I got I don't know if you'll see in the video but I got I kind of he accidentally like hit me in the face. It wasn't like a full strike, mm -hmm. but when I had him in guard, when he passed my guard, um, he he moved his his hand and it it hit my lip. My head hit the mat. He hit my eye. So I like kind of like double struck me. And now my eye hurts and I, I was mm -hmm. bleeding, which but like not bad. And yeah. that didn't really hurt. But I took a shot, you know. Yeah. And um and then he got shot. my back and he was trying to choke me in there. But I was what I was really proud of is that I didn't tap in very bad positions. Right. You know, like, he... I, I was super proud that I pulled guard. He didn't come down, because I think he's just fucking strong. Yeah. He's just a strong dude. Yeah. And I, I didn't know how to get him down. But right. I kept the guard, and then for, for quite some time, and then he, he came down, he, he side control, and then he, I turned over, he kind of got my back, and then... Yeah, I made it what like over four minutes, over four and a half minutes, maybe. Maybe. So I almost went. I almost went the five minutes. Yeah, you yeah, had an interesting point, man. You didn't tap to a bad position, because do you know what ended Hoist Gracie's first UFC fight? Do you know why the guy tapped? No. Hoist didn't get a choke. He didn't get an arm lock. He didn't throw a punch. He just got mount. He just got mount. Just got mount, and the guy tried to buck him off this way. Tried to buck and him off faced. this way. He panicked and tapped. Really? Yeah. 
He fought a boxer. He had one boxing right, glove on. I saw on. that. Yeah. Yeah, the, that black dude with one glove yeah. on. It was like the a most a legitimate boxer. Thing. Yeah, and a good boxer. You listen to like experts before they were like, we thought this boxer was gonna knock his fucking head off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, he wore know, one glove because he thought he was gonna jab the fuck did, out of Hoist Gracie. Didn't want to hurt his hand. Really? But he thought he might have to grapple, so one hand was so enough. one hand was free. <laughs> yeah. And he come, always, always comes in his gi. Yeah. He just takes him down. I takes remember the down, fight, but I didn't remember. He just got him in. Takes mount. him down, mounts him, and he taps. No choke. Nothing attempted. I didn't even know that. Dude. Yeah. So that just goes to show, man, how strong of a fear can take hold when you have right. someone on top of you that there's just nothing you can do. Right. But in that moment, even when he was whooping my ass, I was like, this is fun yeah. i was like this is fun like nothing you don't you yeah. can't think about anything else yeah. and i'm just thinking about the breathing and i was just like trying to just like breathe and relax right. and try to think of a scenario of like how to explode out of it which i didn't successfully do you know didn't even come close to winning i didn't even score any points yeah but it was so fun dude yeah. and afterwards i was jacked and then i talked to the guy and he was like the nicest guy in the world. Right, like, and right. I thought he and thought he was super intimidating before the fight, and he was chill. Yeah, is I think that the breathing we did beforehand is really helpful. I'm gonna keep doing that. The, the style of breathing we we're doing is called breath of fire. Yeah, we're just for we doing it in 30 second increments. Where Taylor told us you take your belly button to your spine, right. exhale everything, and then when you relax, it yeah. just naturally comes in. So yeah. the only effort you're putting forth is to exhale. exhale. It's a forceful exhale. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I think he was explaining it like strengthens your diaphragm and it forces air from the bottom, the deepest part of your lungs, out. So you're not doing... It practices that deep breathing and, and not just the shallow panic breathing, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> when you like... That's like panic upper breathing. He's like this... Is that also fat guy breathing. breathing or just my fat friends? I don't know. Because that's what I hear. Like, I was sitting next to my fat buddy, and he's just like... Yeah. Fat guys tend to breathe loud. But, like, shallow, too. Yeah. Like, he's not getting it. I wonder what that is. Yeah, I don't know. I wish I was smarter. But, honestly, doing those exercises before, like, got just got me high, dude. And yeah. I was, like... It, it's definitely, like, mind-altering. Like, mm-hmm. just... For sure, yeah. very focusing. Right, yeah. 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 Because I know I did it between all of my matches, and it, when one fight's done, it's such like a, a, Reset. a mix of emotions. Right. Like, you're just panicked and, like, mm-hmm. going all over the place. And, like, I had one so I was proud. Yeah. People were coming up and hugging me. And, yeah. My parents want to chat. Yeah. And it's like, I, I, uh, I can't. It's like, a lot. Can't yeah. focus. Can't. Like, I, I couldn't talk. Yeah. I couldn't say a sentence. I'm yeah. sure I said some dumb stuff. Yeah. Like, Jiu-Jitsu won. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah. like kind of get the point, but and I had to just go in the corner and just breathe. Yeah, yeah. And I, I really do Stretch think that's the, that's the best thing that yeah. I found in yeah. these tournaments is that style of breathing. Yeah. And yeah, there's other types of breathing. I'm sure they all their benefit. Right. But the thing is, you just got to find something that works for you. you yeah. Know? Which exactly. I think, which because you, your body goes into that that response, you know, when it's combat, you know, you, you can't help your body. Your body's going to panic Mm -hmm. you know and you're gonna go into that fight or flight mode Uh, and and then the whole art of it is like trying to control it Mm -hmm. and i don't know if you had any of these moments but i had one where i was on top and the guy had spider guard on me which yes i I saw that because you had said that's my worst position you you were scared of that yeah when he he had that i was like oh fuck yeah and so he had he had my, my hand and his foot and my bicep and this one he had a lasso and I was just looking at it like, ah, oh, it's terrible. Yeah. I don't know how we got here. Like, <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. You just kind of wake up in a situation just like, mm, yeah, no good. Yeah. I remember that. That was the only time I was like worried. I wouldn't have been worried if the day before you hadn't been like, my only fear is if you give me a spider guard. In that exact position. <laughs> that happened, yeah. Yeah. And like, like I just it, chilled yeah. and hung out. Right. Um, also, before the tournament, I got a little bit high. A little bit higher than anticipated. <laughs> I got on those uh, exhibit taffies. Yeah. And ate a um, good part of it. Yeah. You know. I I'm did not. not, not I was not about to go into my first jiu jitsu tournament. <laughs> yeah, for good reason, man. No way. But uh, it worked out well for me. I got third place. Um, fucked up my elbow, but yeah, dude, it'll be okay. Marshall, dude, you, I, I was blown away. I've never seen you fight. This is your first fight as a blue belt. Yeah. And, dude, no one scored a point on you. Right. That first match, like... It, what, 15 zero? 15 and you tapped zero. him with 10 seconds left? 11 yeah. seconds left? Yeah, I've done that a couple times, right? Get up really high in score, and then 30 seconds left, just go for the kill. Just go for the kill. Which I tried to do in my third match as well, but... Um, I mean... It, I had him a really close triangle. Yeah. 
And I just remember thinking, like, if this doesn't finish him, what else, what can, else, I, what else can, can I do? do? Yeah. yeah, you had him in that mounted triangle. Like, I had a mounted that triangle. Was beautiful. Then I rolled him over, which I thought... I thought he was done, because he stood up, and you locked it in, mm-hmm. and then uh, yeah, he didn't tap. I don't know. Man. Yeah. I wish I knew. Yeah, so I'll post all the videos on YouTube at some point. If they're not up already, uh, check them out on my page. Um... So we yeah, be, I'm glad, glad you came cool. out. Glad you came yeah. out. Glad Are you we did. Done, it. Man? Yeah, I think we're done. Okay, this is gonna be a long dude, video. Dude, yeah. Overall, dude, success, bro. Yeah, dude. Let's do it again. Yeah, definitely. Keep it up. Keep I'm training. glad I did it. You'll be all right. Stick with your yoga. Stay healthy. Yeah, I'm breathing exercises. Breathing bro. exercises. Because that's the thing, man. The technique comes. Right. That's, that'll it's come. It's just gonna it just right. keep showing up, and you'll get it. There's right. nothing to worry about. But in the meantime, I gotta work on my cardio. I gotta work on breathing. And strength, every day, everything. Yeah, but yeah, but breathing is a good place to start. Right. I think if you if I can get a handle on that, yeah, that'd be good. All right, Tales of McCock podcast episode three. Thanks, Ansel Javeri. It's been an honor, bro. My buddy, my homie. It's good seeing Love you. of my life. <laughs> <laughs> we're just gonna cuddle. <laughs> we gotta turn off this camera because we're about to bone on this here. Bed. <laughs> Uh, we gotta get you to the airport. Yeah, uh, man, I gotta hit the road. If anyone's listening, send me a message. I'll send you a free story. Because I don't really think anyone's listening to these. No. If you are, I'll send you a story no one's read before. Yeah. Send me a message. If anyone's listening, Facebook, reach out. Email. <laughs> like, comment. He'll take you on a date. <laughs> he'll, take, he'll take you on a date. Fly to Dallas, he'll buy you a beer. <laughs> yeah. I'll just email you a story no one's read. <laughs> Anyone wants to read. All right, later, guys.